What's good, TMG fam? It's your <laughs> boy L and the Queen. We back with another reaction video, man. How y'all feel? Welcome back to the what channel. Is this? Oh, you about to get to know my uncle, Uncle Ooh. Ron White. That was the uncle name I couldn't remember the other time we was in the video. <laughs> I couldn't remember. Like, huh? But introducing you to my long lost uncle. Oh, okay. Listen, TMG fam, it is officially comedy hour. Comedy hour. Ladies, put the kids to bed. Put the kiddos away. Put the kiddos away. Put them on bed. You know what I mean? Order them a pizza. Put them in bed. Give them a video game. Tell them you'll be back in about a tag, Not daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Fellas, <laughs> kick back, relax, pull you up something nice, sit back, relax, and get ready to enjoy these laughs, man. We got Drink responsibly. We got Ron White, look, <laughs> the yellow blur, tater tot, sex talk. All right, we got that. And then we got another comedian, man. You guys, somebody sent me, so I need to check this out. He's talking about Craigslist is an invitation to get murdered. Okay, so on our videos, can we start having it pop up drunk responsibly? <laughs> <laughs> we be getting comments and messages like, I'm drinking like this. And like, they keep saying you encouraging them to be like, Aki Hawk. I am not. <laughs> I am not. But uh, if we ever meet up one day, trust me, we're going to have a beer together. Shout out to y'all. <laughs> All right, let's get into it, man. My favorite uncle, this dude here. You'll see why he's my favorite uncle. Here we go. My wife's best friend has an autistic child named Lewis. Lewis is 12 years old. He's the sweetest child I have ever known. I've known him since he was six. And uh, we were at their house Labor Day, and Lewis informed me that he was going to run the 40 yard dash for the Special Olympics at Gwinnett High School near where I live in Atlanta. And he asked me if I'd come hoot for him. And I said, Lewis, I'd love to come hoot for you. I just need to check my schedule. And he goes, We checked it. You're clear. <laughs> well then I'm your man, Lewis. And I gotta admit, I was dreading it and then I ended up having fun. I thought it was gonna be sad. That's why I was dreading it. It's a celebration is what it is. People are tailgating. They're not painting their faces and bellies blue, but they're cooking sausages, getting hammered, betting on these races. <laughs> Make no mistake about it, they are betting on these races. And it's not easy to handicap a race. You got 17 special needs kids in six lanes. You don't know what the fuck's gonna happen <laughs> when they fire that starting pistol. They could scatter, stop, drop, and roll. We saw it all that day. They're not drug testing these kids. <laughs> and they announced a 40 yard dash and I was making a little wager on my man Lewis, which I did for a hundred bucks. And and I was looking down at the track, I'm up in the stands, and I'm trying to figure out which one's Lewis, which isn't easy because they all wear the exact same thing. They wear Special Olympics t-shirts, Special Olympics shorts, which they got that day. But you can wear uh, whatever footwear you want. And Lewis, for whatever reason, had chosen yellow rubber boots. <laughs> which didn't make sense at first, and then it started raining. <laughs> Fuck, if this thing goes off-road, <laughs> I got a natural mutter. <laughs> and Lewis won. The yellow blur. That's what I call him now, the yellow blur. His mother, he loves that nickname. His mother called me the other day. She goes, would you please call Lewis the yellow blur? Put him on the phone. <laughs> You're the yellow blur. <laughs> Bing! <laughs> it's not like professional sports. You go to a Lakers game, you wave at Kobe Bryant until your arm falls off. He won't wave back to you. Lewis waved back to you in the middle of a fucking race. He doesn't give a shit. Lewis is fan friendly. <laughs> Lewis will stop signing an autograph. The yellow blur. I took my son, Tater Tot, to uh, Europe this summer. Oh. My son uh, is 21 years old now. He's in college getting his master's in entertainment business. Uh, he's a great kid, man. He's, uh, I'm so proud of him. He's smart. He's funny. He has my brain's high-end peaks without my low-end problems. <laughs> <laughs> That's some good goddamn news for daddy right there. We've been monitoring it. <laughs> He's funny, I was doing a corporate gig in Orlando where he goes to college and I was backstage with him. And I don't get asked to do a ton of corporate gigs because what do you want your corporate image to be? <laughs> <laughs> we were hoping for an overweight alcoholic that smokes and cusses. 
Let's call Lewis, see if Ron's free. <laughs> anyway, I'm backstage in the green room with my son and I wear wild socks. <laughs> and because I do, people give me bizarre socks for whatever reason. And uh, I'm backstage with my son, I'm putting on these weird socks and, and Marshall goes, uh, Dad, uh, those socks are gay. I said, chicks dig these socks. He goes, chicks wear those socks. <laughs> All right, he's my kid. You can stop those tests. <laughs> I love his mom, man. His, his mom's great. She's my second wife. And, uh, I never argued with her ever. But she didn't want to be married to somebody that was always going to be on the road. And the only argument I ever remember having with her was when he was a toddler about whether or not we should spank him. And her contention was that if you had an argument with an adult and you disagreed with him, you certainly wouldn't hit him. I said, I would if they peed my face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding, pee in my face. See what the fuck happened. <laughs> She busted him with internet porn when he was 15, and I felt so sorry for him. She called me just squawking. Bruh, 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 bruh. And I felt horrible for the kid, because when I was 15, I was so horny, I could jack off to the Sears catalog. Oh and that's just big girl panties and lawnmowers. What in the world? Wait. You laughing. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We got two. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. no. You gotta start checking them. <laughs> you gotta start checking them socks before you wash them. <laughs> you better start checking them, so them socks, bruh. Yeah. Everybody gonna start doing their own laundry. <laughs> this is nasty. Girl uh, <laughs> panties and lawnmowers. <laughs> I can't imagine being 15 years old and having an unstoppable stream of pornography piped straight into your goddamn bedroom. When I was a kid, I had to earn porn, man. <laughs> you had to wait till your friend's dad went out of town on business. You had to pull down a rickety spring-loaded attic ladder. You had to crawl up into a dusty spider-ridden fucking crawl space, forage through cardboard boxes till you find an eight millimeter reel. Then what? Learn how to work a fucking projector, that's what. <laughs> And after all that, you got silent, bushy porn. <laughs> and if there was a soundtrack, it was always so fucked up you couldn't understand it. He's gonna stick his finger in her ear? No, his penis in her rear. Watch the movie. We had one friend that was two years younger than us, and he went, she put it in her mouth. <laughs> I didn't know she was going to put it in her mouth. <laughs> She's going to need to brush her teeth. <laughs> Not yet, but she will. Watch the film. <laughs> Note to self, put it in her mouth. <laughs> so Lori told me, she goes, that's my ex-wife's name is. She goes, you're going to need to talk to your son about sex. It's time. And I said, well, you're right, it is. And she goes, when are you going to do it, Ron? I said, he's going to be at the house this weekend. So I'll talk to him then. And, uh, I said, okay, fine. I said, oh, Marshall, turn off the television. I said, turn it off. I need to talk to you. All right. I said, I want to talk to you about sex. He goes, oh, Dad, come on. I said, nope, you're 15 years old. It's time we had this talk. And he goes, okay. I said, the clitoris is as sensitive as an eyeball. <laughs> Is that it? 
That's all I got. <laughs> Don't go rubbing on it if it's dry. Turn that TV back on, boy. <laughs> what about safe sex, Dad? Yeah, it's never safe. Their husbands always come home. That's a fucking myth. So smart, man. I just can't believe how smart kids are today. He can answer any question that you can come up with in two seconds off his phone. He's a computer freak anyway, but you ask any question. Doesn't matter world geography, world history, a note and a song written 300 years ago. Click, click, there it is. When I was a kid, I had to believe my mother. That's it. That's all I had. <laughs> Mommy, where do rainbows come from? Well, 3,000 years ago, an 800-year-old man named Noah was commissioned by the Lord to build a giant ship and all the animals, two by two. You try to run that crap by a kid today, they're like, click, click, bullshit. <laughs> click, click, porn. <laughs> People fucking on my phone. <laughs> My mother didn't know the answer to a question. I had to go to the library, which is a building <laughs> where they used to store the knowledge. <laughs> now it's just a place where homeless people piss. <laughs> but my mother used to drop me off at the library when I was a kid, and I was always so intimidated by it because it was so big, and you had to be quiet because the knowledge is sleeping. And <laughs> You had to learn a decimal system made up by some fuck named Dewey. <laughs> then you had to peruse a hundred thousand square foot building with volumes of knowledge from floor to ceiling, ceiling to floor. You had to cross reference Dewey's bullshit with the author's name and the card catalog. And you finally get to the place where the knowledge that you seek is supposed to be, and it might not fucking be there. <laughs> Where's the knowledge that I seek? Yeah, somebody else has got it. <laughs> when are they going to bring it back? They keep it for a month for a nickel. <laughs> How am I supposed to learn what I need to know? Yes, your mother. <laughs> My mother doesn't know how to work a projector. <laughs> She's in dental school, for fuck's sake. Don't try to do the math on that bit. It'll just fuck you up. <laughs> the guy actually stopped my show a few weeks ago, and he goes, well, now, wait a minute. Now, if, if this summer you were back in Las Vegas, and that's when you broke your tooth, and that's when your mother went to dental school, and now you're seven years old, you're saying your mother's already a dental. I'm like, well, I do, really? <laughs> you had no problem with Pearl jumping on my stomach and saying she could have all my babies at the same time. But the math on this one joke has got you so fucked up, you just have to talk. Wow. Mal. Yes, he is your uncle. That is my uncle right there. I see. Uncle Ron. All I know is you better have a better conversation about sex with our boys. The clitoris is like an eyeball. Very funny, Sebastian Maniscalco! I went to the Little Italy out here in Montreal. Nice, I like it. I went to the deli over there. I like Italian delis. There's just no options. It just says sandwich. <laughs> and there's a guy in there cutting the meat. <laughs> it's gonna be wrong! <laughs> He's gonna make you whatever the hell he feels like. <laughs> and you're gonna have to eat it. Not like sub. You ever go to Subway? That's a whole afternoon at that. Uh... I got behind a woman. It looked like it was her first time out ever. She came up to the counter. How does this work here? It says step one, pick bread. You don't see that? Be at some point though. And then you be like, it's right there for you. 
She saw the condiments, her head almost popped off her body. <laughs> and it looked like a pigeon just pecking for food. I'll have the cucumbers. <laughs> and I'll have, no, not that tomato, the one on the side <laughs> with no seeds. The guy asked me, what do you want on your sandwich? I told him, run it through the garden. <laughs> Just run it through the garden. <laughs> Whatever I don't like, I'll throw it out my car window. Uh, forget the pickles, right? <laughs> yeah. The whole world's changing, man. Internet's nuts, right? You got people putting stuff for sale on the internet. It's Craigslist, whatever it is. And then strangers are gonna come to your home to look at your stuff? What are you, nuts? <laughs> this is an invitation to get murdered. <laughs> oh, we had garage sales growing up. We just, we threw the garbage out on the driveway. We had some signs with an arrow, come get our garbage. <laughs> and people would mill around your yard, but you would watch them, right? They would get a little too close to the house, like, hey, back up, back off, back up. What do you want? Can we use your bathroom? Bathroom, get the hell off the property. <laughs> and whatever we didn't sell, we threw it out. But we broke it before we put it in the garbage. <laughs> That's my Italian father. He's like, if they're not gonna buy it at my sale, they're not gonna come by later and steal it out of my garbage. <laughs> Saw the couch in half. <laughs> 12 years old, I'm sawing the couch. pop the eyeballs out of the teddy bear and then decapitate the head. <laughs> we throw the head out on Monday and then the body out on Friday. <laughs> Peace it out. All right, the parents today are different than how we grew up, right? Parents today, come on. Everybody's bragging about their kids. What is everybody's kid fantastic? <laughs> Everybody's a winner today though, right? When did this start? 29th place, there's your trophy. <laughs> oh no. Not my parents, they prepared me for life. Disappointment, failure. They put me in basketball. They came to the first game. At halftime, my father sprinted down from the stands like, get the hell in the car, you suck. <laughs> he looked me dead in the eyes like, listen, you humiliated yourself. You embarrassed our entire family. <laughs> Uncle Luigi took off work to watch what you just did. Oh my God. Get in the trunk. <laughs> Italians, we don't play basketball. Yo. When's the last time you put an NBA game on and said, take a shot, Nunzio? <laughs> <Doesn't happen. laughs> My name is Sebastian. You guys have been a fantastic audience. Take care of yourself. I'm saying it. I'm not going to I'm saying, you're going to be right there. I'm gonna turn you're going to be right the there car. with me. I'm going to go back to the car. <laughs> yeah, you're going to be right there with me, man. Shout out to y'all, man. I love Comedy Hour. Do y'all be waiting for it like I do throughout the day? Because I definitely be looking forward to it, man. Ah, laughter for you. I don't ever know what you're going to push me out there in front of. Exactly. We love that part, too. That part of it is the greatest, too. <laughs> laughter is good for the soul. Shout out to y'all, man. Get at us in the comment section. Let us know what y'all think, man. Leave a like, share, comment, subscribe if you're new, and stick around and stay tuned, man. Yes. It's your boy L and the Queen to the next reaction video, man. We out. Peace. Y'all stay solid. Hey. What we do here is go back, 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 back.